There was a box covered with a metal grill that opened into the overflow channel of one of the pools. The cover was broken. Could the salmon have entered this channel in its attempt to get back to the place of its birth, broken the cover, and entered the pool? There is no other explanation for the occurrence. But it seems impossible when you consider the distance the salmon had to go from the ocean to this pool. In order for the salmon to get back to the farm where it was born, it had to begin its journey from this point, that is, from the point where the Redwood Creek flowed into the ocean. Later, the salmon would swim five kilometers against the current and come to the first fork in the river. At this fork, it would make the right decision and go to the north, but further on, there would be an even more difficult branching. Here, the salmon would receive two very similar signals. The farm where the salmon was born was located right in the middle of this branch. The first choice for the salmon would have been to go to the right because the water flowing from it came from that direction. But for some reason, it chose to go to the left and began to approach the farm from behind. The reason for this surprising decision was to be found under the highway that passed through the area. Under the highway there was a channel that collected the water that overflowed from the fish farm. Most of the time, very little water flowed through this channel and leaves absorbed it before it reached the river. But this year there had been a lot of rain and as a result, the water in the channel was able to reach the river. This weak current was enough to guide the salmon. It must have recognized the smell, followed it from the river, and made its way through the overflow channel, having to swim and crawl its way through the five to 10 centimeters deep water. And later, it had to find its way in a confusing system of water pipes in the channel. And even if it succeeded in getting that far, it would still have been stopped at the cover. It must have been squeezed in the concrete channel located inside this wooden track. But the salmon did not give up. It found the pipe, 12 centimeters in diameter, which connected this channel to the pool. It made its way through this pipe and finally came to its last obstacle. It overcame this obstacle by hitting its head against it with great force. So, at the end of this incredible journey, the salmon reached the little pool where it was born two years earlier. When officials of the fish farm realized what had happened, they wondered whether there were other salmon that had returned to their places of birth. In order to see what they might find, they took up the wooden planks and looked in the channel underneath. To their amazement, they found a total of 70 salmon, each with a tag from the fish farm.
This extraordinary story of the salmon gives us an important proof of the creation. We can see that every stage of the journey made by the salmon was calculated. It is by itself a great wonder that there is a program that directs the salmon to return years later to the river in which it was born. Besides this, it is certainly not by chance that the salmon possesses a natural compass that allows it to find its way in the ocean or that it has the most sensitive sense of smell in the world. All this shows that the salmon is a creature specially created for the migration decreed for it. The one who created the salmon with all its extraordinary capabilities is Allah, the creator of all living things and the Lord of all the worlds. One of the most interesting creatures in nature is the honeybee, which offers us a perfect feast with the honey it produces. Honeybees live in colonies in hives they construct with great care. Inside each hive, there are thousands of small hexagonal combs made to store the honey. In order to fill these combs with honey, the bees have to collect nectar from flowers. This is indeed a painstaking task. The latest scientific research has revealed that in order to produce half a kilo of honey, the bees must visit about four million individual flowers. Finding these flowers is in itself a difficult job. For this, the bees appoint some scouts and foragers from among their number. How do forager bees find the way to flowers in tracts of land that are vast compared to their own size? How do they find their way back to the hive without getting lost? How do they explain to the other bees the way to the source of the flowers? When we examine these questions, we come up with some very interesting facts. On the screen you see a bee that has discovered a source of flowers. The job of this forager bee is to return to the hive and inform the other bees of the place where it found the flowers. As soon as the forager bee returns to its hive, it starts to describe the location of the flower source it has discovered to the other bees. First, it lets the other bees taste the small bit of the nectar it has collected from the flowers, which gives them information about its quality. Then it begins its main task, describing the direction to the flowers. It does this in a very interesting way, by dancing. The forager begins to dance in the middle of the hive by shaking its body. It is difficult to believe, but in the course of this dance, the shaking will give the other bees all the information about where the flowers are located. For example, if the dance is in straight lines towards the upper part of the hive, the source of nutrients is exactly in the direction of the sun. 